used to be a nation of farmers, but now it's less than 2% of the population in the United States. And so a lot of us don't know what it takes to grow food. There have been several times when I've gotten frustrated and then like, you know, forget this, I want to do something else. And I can never really think of what else it would be. I mean, there's a lot of work and a lot of challenges, but the rewards are so, it, to me, like it's really satisfying to have some tangible rewards to your work. You know, I, I, at one point, gone back to grad school and done academic stuff and um, the rewards of producing pieces of paper or words on a computer screen are so much less than producing, you know, 10,000 pounds of tomatoes or uh, potatoes or tomatoes or something and seeing it. And, and knowing that people are eating it and talking to the people who are all excited about it, and it's just really, it's really rewarding. What really hit me was these really nice kids from uh, Four Rivers School, we're not, you know, charter school. It is great job, these really intelligent kids. It was great to have <laughs> local farms, and we were, one, we were really nice, but we were one of them. And, and they did a great job, but when, when you looked at every single one, I think 90% of them, all the farms were like, it's just this thing, you know, I, I work all the time, and I go, you know, it's just this, all about how hard they work. And it's like, you know, especially with these young kids, like, what, what are you, what are you telling these kids? It's like, you'd have to be crazy to do this. <laughs> What would it take to change the American food system to make farming sustainable and improve public health and environmental quality? What we're trying to do in sustainable agriculture is to use resources that are in the local ecology and recycle those resources within the system rather than taking resources from another system or another ecology and bring them in. And we should be using solar energy uh, to fuel our systems as nature does rather than relying on imported petroleum or other resources. Yeah, they're a little heavy. There you go. Yeah, so if you flip them and you get to a bunch of big men, it's a tighter row. You can jump in front of the well, other people and they can come and get them. Uh, it's supposed to be like one man. Um, <laughs> can I have a helmet? Enterprise started in 1985, I think it was, uh, maybe 84, by David Jackson. He's out planting right now. Uh, it started with two acres, I think just this home block, from like here to the river. Um, two acres in production. It has since, over the past 25 or 6 years, come to 70 acres. Kind of started like a small market garden. It has since grown to a full-scale organic production farm. It's really interesting because I, I never really pictured myself on such a large, larger scale like this, but um, in the winter, it's like, you know, I, I was very thankful to have a farm employ me. Um, so it's cool, it's fun. It's, it's always something different, it's always exciting. Um, it's not, it, it's a lot of teamwork too, which I really. <laughs> Believe it or not, people join the farm so that they can have an experience of authentic loss. <laughs> no, that's why they join the farm. If they didn't want an experience of authentic loss, they would go to Brenton Circus where there is no loss. <laughs> it's all up and downs every day, all you want, just give me the money. Right? Why would they come to a CSA? Because they want to see what it's like to actually go up and go down. That's why they like this thing. So having a loss one or twice is a good thing. It helps make them understand that this is real. We've been farming organically for about 25 years. And because it is a system of farming where you are thinking about the human relationship to, to agriculture. You're thinking about primarily producing good food, food that you have no doubt about what, what character and quality it has, um, food that's healthy, that you have no doubt that my kids can eat. Um, and so we've looked for, to evolve ourselves in a system that is diverse and healthy and uh, sustainable. We have to respect nature's logic in all of this. 
we have to respect the, the millenniums of history that have gone into breeding. This is the, the work of thousands of generations of people who have plucked the wild onion, you know, developed a little bigger one, chosen that over time. And it's not something anyone can say they own. Three acres, two and a half acres in production down at University Drive. You know, right across from the Hampshire Bicycle Exchange, there's a, um, a little farm stand. That's the one that I ran and kept records all summer. And then those, there's corn fields, and we grow corn and charred peppers. That's where the majority of our vegetables are right now. We have um, beets and carrots and Watermelon. Watermelons. Yeah. Stop and talk to me. They wouldn't buy anything, but they would talk to me and they would tell me how happy they were to see farmland right there on University Drive, you know, like, because they were going to just expand that new market plaza, Gold Gym Plaza, and make that whole other strip of commercial shit. And I was happy that it, that people were appreciating that it was a farm. They didn't buy anything from me, but I was happy. I was, I was happy that it was a farm. It's just great work. And it's meaningful work to be not only providing the food that people eat, but also providing it in a way that you hope is making the world better. It can be very calming if you don't let the stresses get to you. If you can just back away from the, the problems of the farm, Associate yourself with the cows for a while. And you realize it's, you know, this is what it's about. Wonderful people to start a grain, bean, and seed CSA. Um, and we're in our first year here. And we're, we're, we're pretty much kicking ass. We're in, the, we're, we're in some bean weeds. Yeah, we've had a great, we've had a great first season. Um, we've a, a waiting list as big as our membership. And... Uh, we, we harvested all our small grains without a hitch. I mean, it's one of the exciting things about this project has been the just the, the wide, wide interest in in this whole sort of field of of agriculture. I mean, across our region, in Vermont, Maine, New York, people are doing similar things. Uh, we're the we're actually the only grain CSA in the region, but people have been you know people are growing grains for bakeries and. And then there are a couple of Yeah, always talk the best way to learn I really feel is like especially I'm still learning, you know, I have so much to learn here still and I always find that talking to other farmers is a wonderful resource. <laughs> you know, it's like finding out what someone else is doing and how that could apply to what you're doing and you know, and books are great too, but there's nothing like doing it, you know, that really teaches you much quicker than a, a book can. It's just great work, and it's meaningful work to be not only providing the food that people eat, but also providing it in a way that you hope is making the world better.